Well, folks, uh, welcome to the comic book movie panel. Uh, this should be really exciting, because, wow, is there a lot to talk about with comic films. Um, I am James Logan. I am the um, host of Superhero Rewind on YouTube. Uh, I am reviewing every superhero film ever made. I've been working on this <laughs> since uh, since uh, 2009, and um, I'm, I'm up to, I think, uh, 120, 130 episodes. Um, so uh, that's something, that's a, that's a big thing I do, and that's uh, the show that we're uh, most well known for on YouTube on Geekvolution. Um, so uh, I suggested this panel because it's something I really wanted to talk about, and I'm glad we're doing it. Um, would you guys introduce yourselves and um, tell me what your favorite comic book film of all time is? All right, uh, my name is Michael Lee. I'm out of Minneapolis. I'm a longtime comic book fan. Um, and uh, the, the big thing for me, I think actually, right now my current favorite is still The Avengers because it's, it, was, it was something that I would have never believed a comic book movie could be um, in that it man managed to balance both, both the comic book stuff and become the monster it, it was. Cool. <laughs> oh, that's it. Your turn. I'm Dennis Young. I write the Ardwellian Chronicles fantasy adventure series. Come on up to my table. I'm doing random page readings today. You give me a number one through four for the books, and 100 through 400 for the page, and I will read you a page. And then hopefully I can convince you to buy a damn book. You know, that would be wonderful. What a concept. If you like... Can I steal that? That's fantastic. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, if you, if you like... Um, if you like complex plot lines, if you like family, uh, shall I say, blood oaths and uh, things <laughs> like that. If you like involved adventures that follow certain people for a long period of time, right now I think I'm up to about 50 years, um, come on up and we'll, we'll talk. I think you might enjoy it. It's a lot of fun. So um, as far as movies, yeah, I just watched probably what are my two favorite uh superhero movies just the other night. I watched The Avengers, which I agree, I never would have believed they could have done it, and I think it all uh, came, came down to casting and writing. Oh, yeah. I yeah. don't think they could have done a better uh, Tony Stark. I think Robert Downey Jr. just owns Tony Stark at this point, but the other casting is, is good as well. Uh, my second one is Watchmen, and I know that oh, yeah. that movie has taken a lot of grief because of the differences between it and the graphic novel. I never read the graphic novel, so I don't oh. give a damn. Uh. <laughs> um, I did, and love both versions, yeah. so there you go. Um, Back my, to you. My favorite comic film uh, still has got to be Bat Batman Begins. Um, I, 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 still, I still say that. Uh, it, it, it hit me in the right place when it came out, and, it is, and I have not changed my mind about it. Um, it is, I think Begins is one of the best explorations, explorations of the concept of fear and fear as a motivator and what fear does to people of anything I've ever seen. And it works fantastic as a comic movie and is just a movie. And that's one of the things I really, really like about it. Um, today, I want to talk about uh, the future of comic movies. I want to talk about a number of upcoming movies that are coming out in the next two years. We're going to go down, hi folks, we're going to go down a list of uh, comic films that are coming out in the next two years. And then we're going to talk about the future of comic book movies in general. We're going to talk about what Marvel is doing through phase two and phase three. We're going to talk about what uh, DC is or is not doing, and we're going to talk about amusing things like the fact that we're getting Rocket Raccoon in the movie before we're getting The Flash. So let's <laughs> get started. Uh, so things coming up soon. Uh, obviously, just in a couple weeks, we get Man of Steel, which uh, DC is putting all their eggs in that basket. Uh, that movie is going to make or break uh, the future of uh, movies on DC Comics. Have you guys seen anything on Man of Steel? Uh, what do you think about what you've seen so far about that movie coming out? I've seen, I think, three trailers, mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken. Um, my question is, what else have they got? Nothing. Batman's done. They're not going to reboot Batman for at least five years, I would say. Uh, That's what they're saying, they, too. Yeah, well, yeah. Uh, of course, look at Spider-Man, three years, and it was back. They're, they don't have anything else. So different. Yeah. And, and right now, Marvel is just absolutely eating DC's lunch. Um, and they're doing it through the writing, they're doing it through the casting, they're doing it through the stories. And I don't know what, to, this is the third set of Superman we've seen, or that we will have seen. And, you know, first of all, Christopher Reeve, I don't personally think there will ever be another Superman done as good as Christopher Reeve. I saw Superman when it first came out in 78, took my three-month-old son to see it. He sat there entranced at the opening credits and cried the rest of the way through the movie. <laughs> but um, I... 
I would love to have seen them do something uh, more with Christopher Reeve other than the following movies that came after that. But uh, right now, yeah, they've got no other basket to put their eggs in but Superman. They really don't. Um, I really like a lot of what I'm seeing about Man of Steel. There's some things that I'm not sure about. We'll see what it's like when it comes out. Um, I, th I think it's... I, I think it's smart to let uh, Zack Snyder direct one. I'm glad that Nolan didn't direct this film. Um, I mean, I love Christopher Nolan, but it's you know time to give somebody else a shot. And I'm glad. I mean, I'm glad that he's involved a little bit in the writing and stuff. But it's mostly a Goyer script, so we'll see. You know, yeah, like, I, I, it's, too, it's way too bit. early for me. I haven't yeah. gotten. I and and to put my my own bias is stuff. I'm much more of a Marvel comics fan than a DC comics fan oh, generally. Cool. Yeah. Um, but still, especially considering the original Superman is is close, you know, would have been very much on my top three, four superhero movies of all time. I haven't seen them get there yet, and I'm not too terribly sure about Man of Steel yet because um, the later trailer, the later trailers are more promising. But I am disappointed that they went to to remake Superman, you know, bring in Zod and all that right away. I mean, there are so many great Superman villains that they could have done. Why isn't it, you know, why, you know, it doesn't have to be Lex Luthor, actually. I can see not doing Lex Luthor, you know, starting with Lex Luthor, but, but a Brainiac film would be awesome. That was my gut reaction to why do we have to go back to Zod right away, but I am glad that we're finally getting more of a comic book Superman film. And so that's the thing that I'm most excited about is just that we're finally we're finally drawing from some later source material which we've never seen done with that character in live action. Yeah, um, and I'll be yeah. I mean, uh, there's um, and I think part of it might be because they feel compelled to do an origin story again, which I don't I don't think is necessary because it's hard to beat Superman in that sense and 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 Superman's origin originally is two panels anyways. Um, and so, so I, I kind of am. I resisted that right away too. Yeah, I'm reserving judgment right now. Um, I would like, you know, I'm, I'm disappointed. You know, I'd like to see something more from from the DC side because I think they've got some stuff that would be really good. Well, it's been 35 years since Superman's origin. Oh yeah. Was done. So I, I don't think there's any any problem uh, doing his origin again because there's a whole generation that hasn't seen that. Fair enough. Unless you, although unless you fair, see it on TNT some, or someplace like that. Although to be fair, some people are saying, well, we spent 10 years on it in Smallville. Why do we have to do a movie on it again? Yeah. Um, if, if you watch Smallville, yes, that's, yeah. a, that's a good point. But uh, at the same time, this is this is a little different because we're going to gloss over Smallville. It's going to take yeah, well, 15 enough. minutes in the movie and then yeah. we get into, yeah. get into Metropolis. But, um, you know, Superman, obviously, and I don't, I don't care... How much you like Marvel or anything? I Superman was, has always and will be always the number one iconic superhero. He just is. Yeah, no question. And it doesn't matter whether you like him or not, or whether you think he's too all powerful or not. He is the number one icon in superhero uh, comic books and always will be. Uh, the others are second, regardless of how far back you place them. But Superman just he has a different place in in superhero uh, comic books. Batman. Um, I'll be honest, when I was growing up, my two favorite heroes were Superman and Batman until I got into the 60s and started reading Marvel. And that's what uh, all of a sudden I looked back on some of the Superman stuff and I said, good Lord, they actually wrote those. <laughs> and some of the writing back in the late 50s to early 60s in Superman was just atrocious. They put him in situations. They, they tortured poor old Jimmy Olsen to the point it was ridiculous. They tortured Lois Lane. I remember a, a cover I saw from a 1970s Superman where he has strapped Lois Lane to the front of a car. She's spread eagle on this car. She's tied down, and he's dropping the car to the pavement. I'm thinking, first of all, wow, that's a code comic. And they let them, <laughs> yeah. and they let them How does it have that. a seal in the corner? How, yeah. How did, how did they have that woman? And that You talk about bondage and everything else, and it's got the comic code seal on it. But Superman, it, they just, he is so powerful that there's just hardly anything that he can't do. And that is what Marvel played on in the 60s. Yeah. Here's this character who can do anything. Our characters are human. They have flaws. And that was the beauty of what Marvel did in the 60s. Um, I want to go uh, kind of 
somewhat rapid fire through some of the stuff that's yeah. coming out um, before we jump a little bit more um, generalized. Um, and I'm doing this in uh, release order. So some of these things we won't have anything to say about. I just want to just kind of throw out, here's stuff coming out. Is this um, like a one sentence thing? Yeah. To <laughs> mostly, no, it's okay. Uh, to, but, but to mostly make the point of, Dear God, do we put a lot of these out every year now. Um, so we've got uh, Kick-Ass 2 coming out June 28th, uh, which is going to be a really strange one because they, obviously we've got an aged kid girl now um, in, in, the, in, in the comics, and in, in Kick-Ass 2, she's still a little kid. She's still, like, what, 10 or 11. And um, the actress has aged and is, you know, a young woman now, and, and they're, they're going to, they're going to, they have to build that into the plot somehow. I resist that. I don't know what that's going to be like. I am excited to see Jim Carrey in that film. I haven't seen any trailers for it, so yeah, yeah. I don't have a lot of comment on that. Okay, thing. all right, cool. We'll, we'll move on then. Uh, yeah. So uh, The Wolverine comes out July 26th. Um, this will be uh, Hugh Jackman once again uh, uh, as, as Wolverine. Um, I, I'm, I'm hopeful for this one because uh, I disliked Wolverine uh, Origins as much as I did. And... Uh, you know, I, I've seen a lot of uh, stuff from Hugh Jackman and the director and um, what they're planning on doing with it. And they're adapting uh, one of the better Wolverine stories, um, one of Frank Miller's stories. And uh, if, if you know anything about the history of, uh, of uh, comic movies, you know that um, w apparently one of the most important things to do is to adapt everything Frank Miller ever wrote. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, we're, so we're going to get that, and it'll be interesting to see what that's like. So, uh, yeah. So where does this fit in the timeline? It's well in the future, believe it or not. Um, this is after, apparently, now I thought it was going to be just like somewhere between like uh, First Class and, or I'm sorry, like X-Men, X3 and uh, Days of Future Past, which is coming out um, uh, next year. No, uh, it's apparently, according to an Entertainment Weekly article I read this, this, this week, Apparently, it's after everybody has died, <laughs> and, and, and it's about and it's about Glorious. yeah, and that's what I read. Yeah, I, I mean, I know that I, I suspect because I think they are going to bring that back into because I I've gotten some feedback that it's that it is going to connect to the Days of Future Past. It, it is, it um, is. But but what I read was that this movie doesn't really connect much to Days of Future Past, but they're doing like one little thing that is. Yeah, I'd be surprised if it wasn't just a stinger. No, like, yeah, that's my expect, that's that. my expectation. Uh, we know Finka Jansen is supposed to be in it, but I think it's one of those things where like she's just kind of in his head telling him things, and um, so anyway, it'll that'll be interesting. But, but I mean, it's supposed to be a, a movie about Wolverine's mortality and how he'd like to be human, and he, you know, from the trailers we see that he loses some of his. And the art, I've seen some of the poster design. I really like it's, it's, it's I, and so I'm actually surprisingly looking forward to it because I didn't even see Wolverine Origins because I was like so burned by X3. Um, and I was like, oh, they aren't making any more films in, until... Yeah, yeah. do yourself a favor and watch this one first, because if it's awesome, and then you go back to X-Men Origins Wolverine, that yeah. would just be a really interesting experience. Yeah, I'm, oh, I'm, yeah. yeah, I'm not going to work. Uh, October 4th, we get Sin City, A Dame to Kill For. Uh, so, speaking of Frank Miller, uh, they're, they're finally we get the Sin City sequel. Um, it's sad that this is after uh, uh, Michael Clark Duncan's death because uh, he had he would have had a role in that story and um, I don't know what they did with it I've not I've not looked into it I, I don't know now but um, what I'm a little bit uh, not sure about is I'm a little afraid that half of it will be great and the other half will be strange because Frank Miller has had to write a new half of the movie because Dame to Kill for they're adapting straight as far as I know but to fill it out he had to write new material and if if you're like me and you've and, and you've read very much Frank Miller, um, I don't think his newer stuff is anything like as good as as his older stuff. And the spirit was very strange to say the least. So um, it'll be interesting to see what they did with that. I wish it had come out years ago. Well, yeah, and it should have. Um, it's it's kind of like the uh, <coughs> Star Trek sequel. Why do you wait four years? Four to bring years. Out, bring out, kids uh, have when have entered reboot, and left high when, school. When you're trying to reboot yeah. a series, why in the world do you wait for four years? And don't give me that crap about you can't get a script put together. Yeah. Especially yeah. when attention spans last about thirty seconds. Yes, exactly. So yeah, Sin City uh, and Paramount Wonder Woman should, should have been should have been out here ten years ago. It should have been out. Yeah. Like and there's again. When, when you have so many crappy movies coming out every year, of whatever genre they are, rom-coms or whatever, you know, just uh, why not choose something that you think will, will probably bring in a couple hundred million dollars and go with that and give it a shot because some of the stuff that they, they bring out of Hollywood, and, and I have talked with, with a lot of my friends about this, why do they make so many crappy movies today? Well, there's one thing that Hollywood, just like any business, has to have, and that's cash flow. Yeah. You've got to have money coming in all the time. It doesn't matter if this movie 
just breaks even or this one only makes $10 million or this one loses $10 million. You've got to have the cash flow. You have to have people buying tickets all the time. So Sin City, a damn kill for, should have been here 10 years ago. Well, I mean, if, if it had been here 10 years ago, it would have come out before Sin City what? did. But I get your point. Um, yeah, to, I mean, like, like it's, it's, it's too late. That movie should have come out yeah. at least in, in, in 09 or 10. Or it, one of the things they could do now is they could easily re-release Sin City, and I think it would do great. I That's a find great a, point. Find a whole new audience. Good, good point. Or, or, or maybe even release it um, in, in some theaters as a double feature. Well, yeah. yeah. Yeah, although I'm sure there might be some of that. I mean, I don't have a lot there of... There might be. Yeah, right. I mean, I mean and, and they don't do a lot of bring old theaters to regular, you know, no, to, unless it's a second run, yeah. you know, special, special stuff. Um, I think Sin yeah. City could do well again. Yeah. I really do. Um, I think it do better this time now than it did the first time, actually. Because yeah. a whole new audience, uh, people are much more into the graphic novel and the, the ultra-violence that, uh, that Zack Snyder is wonderful for. Yeah, uh, yeah. Regardless of what you think of his movie talents, he's, he's really good at violence. <laughs> and he glorifies it, in fact. But, uh, the point is, I, I think Sim City could do a, a, a good job. That's a great point. Yeah, put it back out. Um, the last thing uh, I've got on the list for uh, this year is uh, November 8th, uh, Thor The Dark World, um, which is looking good oh, so far. Uh, I love the trailer. I uh, really like Walt Simonson's Thor run. Uh, I don't know if anybody in the room has ever read that, uh, but that, that's where you get Malekith the Accursed, and he's going to be the villain in that movie. Um, I'm stoked for it. And he's, he's being played by... Um, Christopher the, uh, Eccleston. Christopher Eccleston, thank you. And uh, that's such a good show. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm interested. Yeah, I'll be, I'll be really excited to see that. that. What do you guys think of Hemsworth? I, I, yeah. I want you to think about this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Star Trek, the new one, 09, George Kirk. That's Chris. That's Chris. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Thor is Kirk's Stop father. Stop and think about yeah. it. Yeah. And go back and look at it, and he looks nothing. <laughs> nothing like, yeah, nothing. I, yeah. Just, watch, I just watched skinny kid. <laughs> I, well, the yeah. fact, for me, for me, out of all the Marvel That tells you how so much far, time has passed between yeah. those films. Well, well, not just that, but also, I mean, the original Thor, because when it came to Marvel films, I wasn't sure if they could make work. Thor was the big one. I thought yeah. they did a good job. And and I you know I was like yeah. Thor you know Thor was the one where I could see them not having you know as, you know as I described it the courage to go full Kirby yeah you know I mean yeah. because and, and, they, and they, they did, did. they did um and they were I never thought they could make a physical rainbow bridge work and that's the coolest thing the whole movie yeah right? yeah the rainbow I mean they they were able to pull that stuff off and. And it looks like Dark World is doubling down on all of that stuff. The and only thing I don't like so far about Dark World, and I'm hoping they convince me when I actually see it, is that they, they went full tilt, like you said, with all the costumes in the first movie. Why did they change Malekith's design? He doesn't have his kilt. He doesn't have any color. He's just straight black and white. It, it oh, they'll change that all the CG. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, I, I haven't seen well, that. Well, but this, I'm saying this from the trailers, man. Yeah, like, yeah. They'll change it. Don't worry. Well, I, I, I think I think it'll be I interesting it to see. I think no, I don't think they. You know, they do do some. Um, I mean, there are certainly variations that they do when they translate. I'm reserving so. judgment. Um, you know, just as you are with Man of Steel, I think it's going to be. I, I, I think it's likely to be a, a better film than Thor was. I understand people's reservations about Thor that it's a, that, that it's a little slow going and that the stuff in Asgard is way more fun than the stuff on Earth. I totally understand all of that, but at the same time, like uh, you know, I was really not sure about the Tumblr when Batman Begins came out, and they sold me on that. Oh yeah. So yeah. you know, they might sell they might sell me on. Malekith's design. What I what I really like about yeah. Marvel in general, uh, Thor in particular, is they aren't afraid to write a good villain. And a good villain is what really sells a movie. If you've got a good villain like Loki, and I think Loki, the, the, the dynamics between Thor and Loki are just wonderful. Um, if you've got that good villain, if you've got the guy who, who relishes that kind of role and will just grab that role and run with it, it makes all the difference in the world in a movie. If you get somebody in a part like that who is just either afraid to embrace it or afraid to just dive into it, then yeah, it'll it'll kill the movie, and you can tell you can tell how they how they act in it, how they present themselves, their body language, their delivery, everything. But Loki is he's one of the greatest that Marvel has come up with so far. I really enjoy him. He's even better in the Avengers. Yeah, oh he's, yeah, he's really oh, really super in the Avengers. Oh well, and as I said, I think it's a set of, a testament actually that they can have. I mean, and they're going to do something different with Loki in, in Dark World, um, but I'm so, you know, the, the fact that I'm just as excited to see him back in the film 
after a third, you know, a villain in a third film is is something you wouldn't expect to work. And I have all confidence that that they're going to do something different. and It'll be really, really uh, a lot of good, you know, a lot of fun. Let me ask you guys. A, in, I'm sorry. Let me ask you guys an, an impossible, unfair question. Um, oh, good. I like it. <laughs> Can I give Iron you an unfair Man, answer? <laughs> Iron Man 3. Not only no, but hell no. <laughs> Iron, Iron Man 3 uh, did $174 million opening weekend. I mean, holy crap, it had a giant weekend. Um, Avengers, of course, did, I want to say, $200. Uh, um, what? He was making $53 million on Tuesday yeah. after it came what, out. Yeah. What yeah. is Dark World going to do? It's not going to do as well as either of those. I, oh, I, no, no, of course yeah, not. Yeah. Yeah. It's I, not going to do 174. I but is it going to kill the crap out of the first one? That's my question. Oh, well, you have another, I think it, well, it's hard to say because it's a different time of, you know, the time of year really makes it harder. I don't have enough enough information. I like that we're not just putting these out in the summer. I think it's cool that no, well, we give November a chance. But. Yeah, well, and I think, and, and I think it's pretty clear that, you know that Marvel's trying to do about two films a year is their is their number of, of things and, and and having that pattern is is really positive. And I think it's about the right volume. I think if it does 125 the first weekend, I'll be surprised because oh, we've, because we've got the second yeah. second uh, Hobbit movie coming out just a few weeks after. Yeah. Well, what did the first Hobbit movie? Dude, you know? Not nearly as much as they thought it was going. That's what I was going to yeah. say, though. I don't I'm think the sure. Hobbit. I don't think the Hobbit plays into it. I'm not sure how much competition that ends up no, for the, unless they open the exact weekend. Yeah, I, I think 125 million would be a good weekend for oh, the second yeah. floor. I really yeah, I think yeah. That would I, be was gonna say, I, I was going to say I was going to say 100. I'm not sure. Yeah, break that. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, 100 is probably. I think yeah. his popularity has grown since has, the Avengers. Yes. But a lot of people have said because I made the statement on on my on my channel uh, that when, when I reviewed Iron Man three. That um, that Avengers made that movie the money that it made, and some people came back and said, "Well, it's, but also Downey, and they're right." Um, so you know, Ken Hemsworth, can he do it do, by himself? Do, do, do it by himself. Well. I, think, yeah. I, think I don't know. If he can, yeah. Yeah. But I don't think he can do 174. No, no, no. And, it, and I think the time of year is enough. But it'll be it'll be, it'll be, it'll be success. successful. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be. I'm not worried about it being successful. Good, um, be let's go into next year and open with the strangest thing I've ever heard of. Uh, I just found out uh, like last week that this movie was coming out. I didn't know about it. It was supposed to be released August 8th, and they pushed it back to March. They're doing a sequel to 300. Yeah. Did you know this? Why are they doing that? So, uh, there is a, yeah, yeah, so, yeah, but can I say something? It's going to bomb. Oh, it, but you can tell by the time of year, yeah, no. Did you know about this? I didn't know about okay, it. Okay, so it's called 300 Rise of an Empire. Yes, now, it's, it's, the, it's the fight before Thermopylae. Now, they, they didn't, now obviously Frank Miller didn't write any more 300 so it's not only Zack Snyder directing, but it's Zack Snyder writing. Now, oh God. I love <laughs> Zack Snyder's directing, but I saw Sucker Punch and no thank you. <laughs> we, will, we will argue about Sucker Punch. We can leave that to the you last You can like yeah. it if you want to, but you have to, you, surely you would at least agree that he's not anything like the writer he is a director. Oh, yeah. Um, so I, I love I love Zack Snyder's directing. I know a lot of people just hate him for I, I like, I like his him. overuse of super slow and all of that stuff, and his washed out colors and his glorify, glorification of violence. But you know, if, if I was gonna if I was gonna sit down and watch something just because I want to see a good bloody gory. Almost over, well, very over the top. You're movie. Sucker I sit that. <laughs> <laughs> I would sit down and I would watch 300. I was off on a business trip some months ago, and I, I happened to click through, and that was on. I found on TNT of all places, <laughs> and I just sat down. I just had a blast watching it. It's just so much fun, and the the subtext with Xerxes is just wonderful. Oh God, he is. He he could be wearing. Flaming feathers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they like like they they called it in a press release. They called it a franchise. Like it's not a franchise yet. <laughs> no, one well, movie did not make a franchise. Yeah, I mean, okay, so you made a sequel, but it's not out yet. You it's put it back sequel, to March. It's a prequel. Yeah, oh, and it's a prequel. It's yeah, a prequel. yeah, I'm not expecting much. I, yeah. I don't know if I, I want to see that. Okay, so, so I'm sorry. This has nothing to do with anything. I'm sorry. Just for the next five seconds or so, I've got to ask him this question. So, Sucker Punch. Do you like or do you not like this film? Yes. I, I've actually not wait, seen it. Wait, yes, you, yes. Oh, you do? I, okay, I've not seen it, so I have no opinion. 
right. Um, all right. I enjoyed okay. a lot of things about it, but boy, I thought it was all over the place. You um, have you have to understand, Sucker Punch is not fantasy, but two levels of fantasy. There's there's a second level. That, no, you're right. That you I just don't know if it, that's what I. And like. you have you have to understand <laughs> that that Baby Doll's monologue at the beginning, what happens through the entire movie, and who turns out to be the guardian angel. That's that's the sucker punch. It's oh, okay. Yeah, that's cool. how that's I saw it once. Okay, you have to watch it again. Yeah, yeah okay. Maybe three or four more times. <laughs> yeah, hot chicks with guns is what it's called in the beginning. Yeah, we know but, why you guys like it. But it's really it's, it's got first of all they, they, they are they are just about they are five of the hottest chicks with guns you will ever see in your entire life. But the depth of the movie exists in its two layers of fantasy. And you have to see, you have to watch that, and where it changes, and so subtly changing, and back and forth. And then finally at the end, when, when Baby Doll's monologue at the beginning begins, everyone has a guardian angel. You have to, at the end, you see who the guardian angel really is, and that's the sucker punch. So, now, I didn't know, I didn't know I was going to be running a panel with a Zack Snyder fanboy, yeah. but that's <laughs> fantastic. Okay, uh, moving right along. Captain America Winter Soldier, April 4th. Yeah. Um, so I mentioned earlier that uh, that we were going to get uh, uh, Rocket Raccoon before we were going to get the Flash. Would you believe also Bat Rock the Leaper? Yeah. yeah. So uh, we're going to get... DC, what has <laughs> happened to yeah. you? Um, I am Bat so... Rock yes! The, Bat Rock the Leaper is going to be in this movie. Um, the, uh, the, the the really like CD list like uh, French villain. Um, and they actually got a Frenchman to play him. I'm oh, really actually, they, like, it's not even a Frenchman. It's like a, a French person who has the appropriate athletic skills to be bad for I don't remember. I don't there remember is who no it is. Such thing. No, no, I'm serious. Yo, it was like it was like as soon as you know, as soon as you're like, well, of course that's what they're gonna do. And, and can I say, we're nerding out a little bit. Um, well, there's no. Like, <laughs> say this, but but th this this is ridiculous. I gotta say this though. What kind of makes me excited about Bat Rock the Leap Room is that Marvel got the rights to Daredevil back. Oh, good, good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, no, and, and then like I'm like I'm like there's I mean I have no idea what's all going to be in in, yeah. in Winter, Winter Soldier, Soldier, but but I know that. Armin Zola's back. Armin Zola's back, and, and I think and he actually, actually, and that means, his head in yeah, his I mean, yeah, yeah, I think, I mean, we even, you know, it sounds like they might actually do the head, you know, something, you know, something really weird, um, you know, and, and close to the. Oh, they're the doing comments. Guardians. They'll go there. Yeah, they'll go there. Um, and and uh, I and but at the same time, they're doing stuff that's very much. I mean, the original comic for Winter Soldier is fantastic. It's one of the best Captain America stories ever. Um, I didn't and, think they'd go there that fast. Well, I'm not. I'm actually not surprised that. that they go there that fast okay. because because they're, because a lot of the Marvel film stuff um, is clearly taking from the stuff over the last decade. Yeah, you know, the last decade or so, the comics even they more. They want to than, stay with the current. Yeah, they current, want. To, yeah, they're uh, keeping. They're keeping stuff fairly audience, current. Yeah. Um, yeah. But um, but at the same time, they're not like ashamed of anything. You know, of of, of a lot of the stuff they're bringing all sorts of things. But uh, yeah, I'm um, because like the Falcons in this as well. And, and they're gonna set him up for adventures too. I don't know. Well, they're set, they're they're setting up a whole bunch of stuff for you know for potentially for Avengers too. And, well, at some so, point, yeah. they've got to bring Red Skull back. They have to. Um, um, but if they do, not, the, not, I don't think it'll be in this one. He's no, not in this. Yeah, one. but they'll have to recast him. He'll, yeah. Why? Because um, what's his face doesn't want to come back. Yeah, I don't think they just haven't thrown enough money at us. Well, no, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> he's, got a, he's got a, I mean, he's got a contract. How big a trouble his money do you want? We'll yeah, get it. No, that's true. <laughs> but he, he didn't like, he didn't like playing it. I don't know. Who was um, it? Um, um, oh, you know. Did somebody say Agent it? I Smith? Think of his name right now. Yeah, yeah. Agent yeah. Smith. Yeah, Hugo Weaver. Hugo yeah. Weaver. Thank you. Um, and yeah, he did a great job. He I came he on. Yeah, but he came on record to say he didn't have a good time playing that role. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I think he's been there, done that. It's kind of what, yeah. He's one of those. Yeah. If, if they if they do bring him back, I don't think they'll get it. They'll, they'll get the performance out of him. They they got. No, they'll get someone. They'll, they, if they do just, if they do it, it'll be someone. It's him. money, baby. Maybe he just wants a better script. That's all it is. Maybe he does just want a better script. Yeah. Well, you're right because I mean, like, I love Captain America, but he didn't get enough to do. Um, I totally, um, what's I totally his name that plays Cap? Um, Chris Evans. Chris Evans. Yeah. Chris Evans. yeah. 
Uh, I read a really interesting article about him just a couple, three days ago when um, when he was cast for the movie, of course, and what he had to go through to bulk up for that. Because, you know, he was a pretty good sized guy. Six foot, he was like 185, 190, you know. He ended up at 225 pounds on a six foot frame. And he does not have a heavy frame. He's got a very medium, almost a light medium He didn't frame. think he could look like that. He didn't think he could do that. That's right. And he said the worst part about it was not the workout, but the eating. Yeah. yeah. That's he what he said. Jackman he constantly does. had to eat. And he does said he have he, to eat chicken breasts like yes, Hugh Jackman does? exactly. That's how Hugh Jackman does it. Seven a day, yeah. chicken breasts. And he said he just, he got to the point where he was, he thought he was going to throw up every minute. You know, he'd eat and then they'd go out and film. And then he'd eat and they'd go out and film. And it would just, you know, it was torture, he said. He, he said he got to the point he didn't mind the workouts because it got rid of the fullness, you know, it worked out the energy. But my God, what a physique that man had Good Lord. And you see him in uh, in the Avengers when he's he's at the punching bags. Yeah. Especially shot from the back and, and the width of, of his chest or of his back and his shoulders. Just, oh, good Lord. And I don't think that was enhanced with CGI. I think that's actually him. And they, they really did a good job. And this goes, again, this goes back to the casting. Yeah. And the amazing job that the Marvel people have done, uh, the, the casting crews and the, and the casting companies they use, they have, really, they have hit the nail on the head every single time. I don't think they've missed with any of their heroes. And I can't think of any of the villains that they've missed with yet. Um, Maybe um, you guys can throw something in on that. I mean, it's it, the the ones the ones I have are really minor. Um, like like uh, I like Scarlett Johansson. I think she does fine. I just kind of wish she had a she had a Russian accent. That's all. Yeah. Um, but especially because and it wouldn't have been a big deal except that you get to Avengers and then suddenly she's speaking Russian. And I just would love them to tell us why she's got a straight up American accent all the rest of the time. She did, um, couldn't do a Russian. Yeah, exactly. Well, or be a, com or be a comedy Russian actor. Give me, yeah. give me some, but and don't do that. But give, give me some know. kind of character explanation in the film because it's a little bit strange. Um, I just think for a general audience, it's odd because nobody going into Avengers would have understood she was supposed to be Russian. Yeah, that yeah. probably came out of nowhere for people. But she's a super That's spy, and she can use any accent she wants. That's oh, yeah, fair enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I don't know. Fair enough. But uh, I guess the other annoying thing about it too is just with other media now, it seems like now Scarlet or and now that character's got to not be Russian, and I think that's kind of annoying. Um, just because that's what she was in the comics. Not that it matters to me. She's not a character that I really care that much about. I'm just saying for some people it she, matters. She's a space I understand filler. that. She's so. a space filler in the Avengers. She brings in the female. Uh, female ass kicker, and and she does a pretty good job, I think. She's good in her acting. Yeah, she's scenes. fine. Yeah, and, she's fine. She's fine. Uh, I thought her scene with Loki in the uh, in the cage was quite good. The way she drew him out, and just the way she pretended to be horrified at what he knew about her, and then all of a sudden he says the wrong thing, and boom, she got it. He's he's in her web. And she, he, she knows exactly what talking he's doing. about other um, other characters uh, that that maybe weren't cast quite right, um, but I, I think everybody has been. Um, I, I did really like the recasting for Rhodey. Um, I, 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 do, I do like um, it was Karen Howard before, and now it's Don Cheadle. Um, yeah, I like I like Don Cheadle quite a bit better. Yeah. Um, and I and I and I thought um, he was great in uh, Iron Man three. I still felt like he didn't get quite enough. I thought he was better in three than he was in two. Well, yeah, three is better than two in every way. I didn't care two at all. I, I, agree I missed uh, I missed what's his name that played Rhodey. I thought he looked the part more than Don. Oh, Cheetah. really? Interesting. But, but then you look at Don Cheetah in three, and that guy bulked up. He did, but quite a bit. Yes, he did. I mean, I looked at his arms. He had an arm like that. No, no, he has He was no. Don Cheadle in, in two, two and three. And three. Yeah. yeah, two and three was Don Cheadle. Um, what's his name that played him in the first Karen movie? Tower. Yeah, just no. shot his agent shot himself in the foot. Oh, said, yeah. I want more money. And they said, yeah. not only no, but hell no. We'll get yeah. somebody else. Yeah. Yeah. We'll get Don Cheetah. Yeah. He'll do it for next to nothing. Um, let's go ahead and uh, move yeah, on if, if, if we yep. may. Um, May 2nd, we get The Amazing Spider-Man 2, uh, which I'm looking forward to. Um, I'll say this, though. <laughs> Uh, I, I don't like that they have apparently decided to go with the title The Amazing Spider-Man 2. I, I, don't, I don't like that. I, I, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I, I, I would have gone with something else. Um, there are lots of great Spider-Man monikers. Uh, you could have called it I, I, Spider-Man. You could have called it Spectacular Spider-Man. Um, I would love, just because it's not used enough and I think it's a great title, I think a sequel, especially since they've gone with the brighter costume and stuff now, could have been Sensational Spider-Man. Yeah. I think that would have been great. Or yeah, you know, and eventually then yeah, you know, and unfortunately since it's all you know, it's all it's all thing, they could eventually done Marvel team up. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
Uh, so anyway, have, having not seen oh, you the see second Amazing incarnation Spider of Spider-Man. Okay, I, it's actually, I was actually surprised. I was ple pleasantly mm -hmm. surprised with. I mean, they're, they're nitpicks. It's not as it's it's not as good as the ones that are in the the main Marvel Cinematic Universe ones. But I but it's I but not, I like it. Uh, but yeah, and they made a couple of of, of, of major mistakes. Uh, mostly scenes they cut. Uh, they cut out their villains' best scenes, yeah. and that's never that's good. good. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, you know. Doc Connors has a family in the comics, and when I went to the movie, I was a little surprised he didn't have a family in the film. And that, I mean, you know, whatever. You don't have to stick exactly to source material, but it was odd because um, we go to his house and he looks like a family man, and I wonder yeah, if his and house looks family. And then it turns out that his best scene is a parallel between um, Peter Parker's father leaving. And him about to leave his son, and the scenes the, the, the scenes are, are very poetically parallel and really sad and really touching. And why would you cut that? Yeah, and no, and I, I think I think it's also one of those advantages because when you ever you can, because a lot of a lot of Spider-Man you know villains, especially when you're going to the original you know the original runs of stuff, you know it's all Spider-Man against Father Fig. You know, father figures. Yeah. You know, Doc Ock. You know, Doc Ock, yeah. Lizard, um, and Green Goblin. They're all father. You know, Especially Green Goblin. Yeah. yeah. Um, and and uh, so I, I think um, I think they could have they could have played that up. Um, but overall, um, I'll be happy to see it. I mean, it would be it'd be kind of neat to to you know almost all the all the Marvel films that aren't. Marvel Universe films. I'm like, I want them to fail, so so eventually Marvel gets the rights back. Um, I would love to see Sony strike some kind of a deal with Marvel and let that oh, series cross. Um, and, and there's been talk about it. They almost had Oscorp Tower in, in Avengers, and yeah. the only reason that didn't happen was because they had the skyline built before they could put it in. Yeah, it was it was going to happen, and, and they ended up not doing it. And if that had happened, um, I think people would have been so excited. The the thing about um, Amazing Spider-Man that that, that kind of surprises me. Is is that it, I think it would fit okay in, oh, yeah. in, the, Mar in, the, Mar in, in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Um, I don't think there's anything about it that tonally is weird, especially no. looking at what they're doing with the second one. It looks like we're going to get to see Spider-Man fight in the daytime, maybe. You know? yeah. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> that never happened. Yeah. You know that sort of thing. Uh, but yeah, I mean, they brighten the costume up. It looks it looks more like a um, you know you know comic book and. Um, yeah, so. so stepping back to the original Spider-Man series okay. uh, with Toby and Kirsten Dunst, <laughs> yes. um, I was always a fan of the relationship they had. I thought it was very sweet. I liked Toby Maguire's innocence that he brought to the part, and Kirsten Dunst as well. I thought they were both they, they both played kids very well. Uh, there was an enormous amount of sexual tension between them, uh, never consummated until later on in, the, in I guess two later in two. And Spider-Man 3, I don't even want to talk about because I think uh, Sam Raimi just blew that away. I'm not sure why. There were a couple it was, of very it was, it was a lot of studios. There stuff. were a couple of very good villains that just went to waste in in three. I if think we had Sandman two hours, been a super super. Villain. I would make you talk about three just because it's fun. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but but it's no. it's okay. But I. No, 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 no. I don't mean because it's good. I mean because it's fun to talk about. Oh, okay. All right. Um, Spider-Man 2 I thought was great. I thought the, the, the fire How fire does the train. symbiote come down from space and land in the main character's back of a motorcycle? <laughs> He's a good shot. Just out of nowhere. Just like yeah. it could have landed anywhere else on Earth and that's where it lands. It's a comic book. Yeah. It can happen. <laughs> no, that's not a good excuse. Moving right along. <laughs> Moving right along. Well, you know what, though? The reason I... The reason we have Yeah, let's keep on going. The reason I let you sit on that for a little bit, though, is because next we have to talk about Michael Bay's Ninja Turtles. Uh, <laughs> so would you like to go back to Spider-Man 3? Is that no? I have no any com time. I have no comment about Ninja Turtles. No comment None at all. all. Well, None at all. Let's just move along. Let's move along. along. <laughs> I love that we're not even gonna talk about it. Uh, all right. Uh, are they gonna have like exploding shells or what? I'm sorry. What? Could tell us what date not to go to the movie theater. Don't worry. Don't the go trend. June 6th. <laughs> Find something better to do. Of twenty of twenty fourteen. Uh, X Men Days of Future Past uh, is is uh, coming out July eighteenth, and we'll have um, more characters than Claremont invented. I yeah, um, I'm so excited about. This. I am too. I am unreasonably you know, <laughs> I'm unreasonably excited about Days of Future Past because 
A. What is wrong with you? No, nothing. You know, this is all awesome. I remember. Are you just from not X Men guy? Oh like, me? I'm talking no, about this no. guy. All I remember okay. from X Men first Deep class is, like, is, is Xavier going. <laughs> oh, I love. I kept first wondering. You know, they have treatments for migraines these days. <laughs> <laughs> I love first class. I love. I oh, love. I, I, oh, I love God. first class. I, really? Wow. Oh, I, <laughs> Yeah, He's I, still doing that. <laughs> oh, I, I, and and I loved, um, I loved X, X one and X, yeah, the first X Men and X, I, X Men two. I didn't care anything about any of the characters in first class. They had mutants there that I'd never heard of. I'm okay. Yeah. Um, I thought Jennifer Lawrence, as wonderful an actress as she is, was totally wasted in uh, in the part. Um, you know. So days of future past. Oh. <laughs> and um, and Magneto Magneto was the only good thing in 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 Magneto first. was awesome. I thought he I, was quite good. I thought he was quite good. Yes. Um, I, I want to say a few but, things about days of future past real fast. Um, I, I'm um, I'm just I'm just excited about that. Review. Just getting those guys back together again. Well, you notice they're bringing in people from the other series. What does that tell you? <laughs> <laughs> that they want to adapt a really cool storyline. Yeah, well, actually, what I'm really excited about is is I don't know what elements. No, no. Here's the thing, though. I'm sorry. To your point, first class performed well. People liked it. They wanted a sequel for it. They're not bringing they're they're not bringing the old cast in because it didn't work. Um, they're they're doing it because it was a cool idea that. Um, um, what's his name? Yeah, well, yeah, Brian Singer. Yeah, Brian Singer had, yeah. Yeah, well, I think some of it is is also bringing Brian Singer back as well because oh, I think because yeah. I think a lot of this is as well is because X X Men Last Stand was that's I, I can't even acknowledge that it exists. <laughs> See, there's where I'll give you an argument. Yo, I mean, and 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 so I. Whoa, wait, 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 I'm sorry. Hold on, I gotta I gotta ask. <laughs> All right, so hold on. No, no, we don't have to argue. I just need no, a yes I, or no. Okay, so so you're gonna say you're gonna say X Men three and first class. <laughs> For the record, I didn't. I was not the person who invited him. To yeah, 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 no, yeah. I, I'm, I'm totally kidding. I don't want to be disrespectful. I'm no, like, I, I was just curious though, because I, I like that is. And, and I mean that is just unusual. That's all okay, I'm going to so say. First, yeah. first of all, there's, there's two things that the original X Men series have that the new X Men series does not. Patrick Stewart. It does now. <laughs> what does that tell you? <laughs> and I love. For the record, I thought McAvoy was as good or better oh, than. I, 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 yeah, I was a big, I was a big no. fan of everything about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, I, but, okay. Right. So you don't like first class? We got it. We, yeah, yeah, we can move on. Yeah, let's move on. Um, but uh, I'll talk about X three. I'll just talk, I'll just talk to this guy. So yeah. um, yeah. But uh, you guys go right ahead and talk back and forth. But, um, <laughs> I like to exchange. Uh, do you think that it is more characters than they can possibly manage? I think some. I I will. I will be really interested to see how they handle all the characters and especially lots of timelines and because I don't think it's going to be the original comic story necessarily. I think it is the same title. No, I'm with you. Yeah, um, and I'm more than okay with that. Um, I think it's inspi you know, inspired to do do the way the times are actually set up. Well, first um, class had nothing to do with the first class. Ex exactly. Um, and, and I was, and, um, but I think um, and I think a lot of these characters may end up being little more than just cameos, yes, absolutely. Um, especially ones that are brought back, um, in, in, and um, so they'll focus on on things. Brian Singer can do big casts of characters. That's that's something he's he's done many times in the past. I think he could have managed exactly the number of characters they had in X three and made it work better. Yeah. Oh well, he totally could have handled X three much much better, um, and he would have. Um, and uh, no disagreement there. And and um, and so I I think I I'm very very interested to see what's what the other piece that really interests me um, was the news this week as well that they're going to have Quicksilver in Days of Future Past. You see, they're going to have Quicksilver on Fox too. They're fighting. A well, no. Well, I mean, part of it is 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 I it, didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. yeah literally, they cast yeah. Quicksilver mm -hmm. for and and and. I'm very curious to see. Is so this, this will be a grudge match, right? Is this a grudge? Is this Quicksilver? Because also, J 
Joss Whedon is that supposed to be in Avengers too. That for those of you that don't know, uh, yeah. they're, they're, they're supposed to put uh, they're supposed oh, to put Quicksilver and, and Scarlet, Scarlet Witch, Witch in in, um, in, Aven- in Avengers too. Which we were talking about yeah. Scarlett Johansson earlier. I thought it was a misstep not to do her in the first film because she is a bigger Avengers character. And yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, I suspect I suspect that was it, you know. Um, Power balance. To, you Probably know, they wanted. So. I think they wanted yeah. the, the two additional characters to be street level heroes. The first thing I wondered when I heard Quicksilver was supposed to be an Avengers two is so that means Magneto's not his dad. Yeah. Well. Well. And I'm, I'm very curious to see: is this going to be grudge match between the two, or is this going to be, is this going to be, you know, that that okay, actually they are in the same, you know, that this is a is trying to connect the X Men films to. Boy. I don't know Avengers. if I want that. I'll be very it's a little big. I have always been a proponent of separating the X Men universe and the films from the Marvel universe because it's less confusing. And the X Men. I'll be very Marvel, curious to see how this all plays yeah, out. Yeah, me too. I, I don't know. You know, anything's possible. Alternate timeline. We've got um. So we so don't have that much time. Left. We've got 13 minutes left, and 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 my hope was for the list to be the first half of this. Yeah. So let's go ahead and get in and in. in uh, That's okay. We can go another 30 minutes. No problem. Well, someone's also have to. <laughs> yeah, I think somebody's after us. Um, um, this is a this is a big topic for an hour. So, um, Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, I'm really looking forward. To. I'm looking forward to because, as you said, there's no way I can believe that they would do Rocket Raccoon and Groot before before be- Wonder Woman. Before Wonder Woman. I mean, this is this is this. I mean, I mean, this is like not even like. What I think of as A tier Marvel material. This no, is it's like, not. This is like. Obscure Marvel material. Well, what's really I mean, they're, exciting they're playing it up. Is that they're giving things like this a chance? They've got the they they they've got kind of the um, the presence now to do that because of their because of their successes. And now um, because this is this is happening, we've got Bendis uh, doing a book that's like in the top ten Marvel books now. Uh, oh, uh, Guardians, Guardians of the Galaxy. Well, that's part of the people plan. People are buying it, and yeah. But what I'm saying is he's making the main list character. Oh yeah, absolutely. People are reading it, and it's fantastic. Oh, it's a great. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm totally. Sold that they'll be able to do it, and and I think it's it's great to see, um, and I think this is one of the exciting things about the Marvel films in general is is they're actually making these Marvel you know Marvel films. Yes, they're not high. You know, it's not it's 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 everything about them. Whether you know they're 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 really taking the source material seriously and thinking of across across all these different platforms, and and even though it's not film. You know, it's not a film. The Agents of Shield TV series is going to be fascinating to watch to see how they these all. Back all I'm glad to see. Yeah, him. He, was, he was a neat guy. Yeah, he and, cool. I'm, and I'm he just so seems like a TV character. You know, yeah. well, yeah, you I mean, see him week to week. Yeah, yeah oh yeah, He'll, it'll be an. You know, I'm very excited about that show, and but I'm also <laughs> excited to see how these all tie together because it's something that's unusual for. For films to do the, in much the same way that the comics originally were, were were unique. One of the best scenes in the Avengers when he pulls that trigger on Loki. So oh yeah. That, so that's what it does. Yeah. <laughs> in, uh, Great in, scene. In uh, 2015, we've only got uh, three uh, major confirmed films so far. Uh, we've got Josh Trank's uh, Fantastic Four on uh, in, in March of that year, allegedly, and um, he of course uh, directed Chronicle. And um, there, it's, it's going to be interesting to see what he does with it. Um, I want to get fantastic. We, we I want to get fantastic. We don't know floor. a great deal yet. We we do know that um, he's he's already uh, playing around with di- with different ethnicities, so that'll be interesting. FF needs a good reboot oh, yeah. at this point, oh, especially yeah. with the success that Marvel has had over the last you know five seven years. I just wish um, Fox had given them the rights back. Yeah, I, know, I, I Fantastic just, Four. In you know, I want. Point, yeah, I don't like. I don't like Fantastic Four being in the separate universe. I, I think it's not going to be as good then. At some point, um, they're going to do the the back up the truck full of money, and, and it's going to happen. They're just going to have to uh, because there there's too much success going on with what Marvel is doing now. Everybody's going to want a piece of that pie. Yeah. Well, yes, but at the same time, Marvel is going to want their is going to want their top of the line back. I mean, well, eventually, that's FF, that's where it's you know, you know that's Spider-Man where Man and and X Men and X Men, yeah. And they they've got to get the Fantastic Four back, and they've got to do a good reboot because that would just kind of be the crown jewel of of all of their superhero uh, franchise, and just they're already looking at Phase Three on oh, yeah. on their their movie series, and I, you know, I just have to. Excuse the pun, Marvel at Marvel, the way they've done this. And I look back in the '60s when they did this in comic books. 
They just came in and just ran roughshod over DC. <coughs> and DC didn't have an answer. And they still don't have an answer. They just don't have a clue what to do, how to market, what kind of characters they need. And that's the last big thing that we want to discuss. And, and yeah. how, they, how they need to expose <coughs> those characters and humanize those characters. They just don't know how to do it. You mentioned Phase 3, the last the last couple movies on the list for Avengers 2 and Ant-Man. Um, I've seen the test footage for Ant-Man. It looks amazing. Yeah, I'm really excited. Well, I'm also a big... Uh, um, yeah, I'm, I'm also you know, uh, a big um, Edgar Wright fan. Oh, okay. So knowing, And knowing yeah. that he's had this kicked around even before the Marvel, you know, the Marvel films really started. Yeah, so, so I'm so, really I, mean, I never thought I'd be excited to see a Hank Penn movie by himself. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. No, I'm, I'm, I'm totally sold on that. Um, and, uh, and that will be very interesting to see the other, the other things that they, they go as, as the films mature. So, um, the only thing that DC has had, um, in, in recent years besides Batman, we've got Superman this year, and that's gonna make or break that that's whole it. thing. I mean, they're, they're just um, nothing else. Green they, Lantern just totally tanked. They refuse to do it Wonder Woman. Work. They just they, don't. They just won't do they it. They can't make that happen. Well, I think I think one of the things because I because I think the real because I think I think Wonder Woman's a great example. The the real slam dunk for Marvel is when they get the solo led female hero film. When they no, actually do, okay. with, you know, when they actually, you know, be, if they beat if they beat Wonder Woman to that with. My, my thought would be um, a Carol Danvers Captain Marvel film. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah which sure. would be a slam dunk, could be a potentially awesome film. Um, and, uh, and. If they keep beating them, well, they, and they, and they, they, haven't, they haven't announced that this, this, is, uh, this is all me, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. me, yeah, sure. where they should, you know, where they should go. Um, oh, but, I, but know, freaking anything is possible. You never thought you'd see Guardians or Ant Man. Oh, yeah, no, though, this is, you know, and I would, I, I think, because I think that would be a really. Really strong way to go. It, I didn't you know, think we'd see a Doctor Strange film as early as we're gonna get one. I mean, yeah, 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 especially considering they can't make the comic book sell. So. Um, well, they, they tried to do it with um, what's your name, uh, Electra. Yeah, Electra. They tried to do that it was, with Electra. I think that was but earlier. Yeah, that, that was, was pre, also Fox. Yeah, yeah that was Fox. Just, that was pre. Once that was, again, yeah, you have the situation where they're not taking the material seriously enough. Yeah, not getting the right director. Yeah. I didn't think there was a problem with the casting at all. The um, um, with Jennifer Garner. Going, going back to DC, uh, the biggest problem I had with Green Lantern, and I think ultimately the reason it didn't sell, um, or a lot of the reason that it, that, it, that it didn't sell, or at least that it wasn't critically successful, um, is because it struck me as the Green Lantern film we would have gotten 10 years ago. Oh, yeah. yeah, it was definitely dated when it came out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, 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 yeah. it played like the kind of superhero origin yeah. films we had yeah. before we had the onslaught of films yeah. we've had in the last decade. Yeah, yeah I think, I, and except for yeah, except for some and of they've got to quit reinventing the wheel like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, and well, and actually, it's not reinventing the wheel; it's regurgitating. I just don't think they're all And, and to some yeah. extent, and to some extent, I mean, my expectation is is Warner may double, you know, may go and say, "Okay, we're going to start with Justice League." Because um, I've heard that, you know, and 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 the. By the way, I have quit paying attention years. to Justice League yeah. news because every other week it's something entirely. Oh, of course, no, I, no idea what they're doing. No, 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 they don't know what they're doing. Um, in that sense, I think. Here's a question I think for you. Yes. Here's a question for you. Yes. Where was that coin? Where was what? Was it Batman Begins, or was yeah, it sure. Iron Man One? What do you What do you mean? Where did they start taking the material more seriously? Oh, Batman Begins. I think. I think. Well, it was in both universes. I mean, Batman Begins was really unique because it was just that one, the you know, the the one universe stuff. But I think Iron and Man. What was very interesting about Batman Begins too is that it was more of a sleeper hit than people realize. Yeah. People give it credit for because um, it didn't do the big guns Dark Knight did. It, not only did it not break records, it didn't do. I mean, it, it, it was, it was yeah. It, yeah, it was just moderately successful, and and so like when they did when they put out Dark Knight, a lot of people didn't even realize it was a sequel or didn't look at it like a sequel. I'd never seen anything like that. It was like I said, it was like it, it was its own film. Um, to answer your point, it was the fact that Iron Man and Dark Knight came out the same year. Yeah, yeah, I think I think that was a big point. That's, that's your that's your defining. And uh, and and yeah, we yeah. we've been poked twice, so we should yeah. end. Oh and we're, goodness. We're at the bread okay, and and so thank well, you um, yeah. thanks for coming, folks. Hope you enjoyed it. Sorry we didn't get a chance to talk to you guys, but there was a thousand <laughs> things. And he no, wanted to talk about Sucker Punch, so. Uh, yeah. He wanted to 
talk about At least you acknowledge we were in the room. Um, I also, uh, folks, I also want to mention just really quick. No tomorrow, blood was lit. Tomorrow morning at 10 a.m., anybody who happens to be a big Star Trek fan, I'm doing a Star Trek trivia tournament in the World Ballroom. That's going to start at 10. It goes to 11.30. Um, so anybody interested, 10 o'clock in the morning in the ballroom. Uh, Sunday morning. I'm giving away big prizes. Thank you, folks.